Hi everyone, it's Jodie here. How are you all? Um, I'm really sorry that this video starts with basically the face already painted. Um, I had a terrible time with this painting. I ended up filming all of the um, painting of the face, but I was so unhappy with how it kept turning out. I painted over her numerous times and in the end I dumped her in the um, paper bag that I have my canvases in and left it for, I don't know, three months. And then um, I also thought, oh well, I'm never going to paint this again. So I actually deleted all the video that I had made of the painting of her face and <laughs> Then I was busy painting something else and I picked her up and just painted over her face again and I quite liked how it turned out so I thought oh well okay I will continue with this and I'll just paint or video the process of where I'm at at the time. So I suppose it is an example that nothing is ever lost um, sometimes you do chuck things away which you well if you've chucked it away then it's no point regretting it is it because you just can't get that back um, but at least I put this to the side and um, I have started it sort of from that point but I do at a later stage in this video go over her face again because I have finally found a painting combination or a paint colour combination that I actually like for skin tone. It is using a paint by Liquitex and now I've got to try and find it. Um, it is the Light Portrait Pink by Liquitex. But with that, I mix a little bit of yellow ochre and I really like that skin tone and with all the other bits and pieces that you add to that, I mean, that's really good base colour, a little bit of yellow, especially to a um, white, uh, the white skin or Pakeha or, uh, you know, <laughs> skin tone, fair skin tone. So... Uh, yeah, so this picture is called Be Mindful and it's about being being aware of all the little bugs, even the bugs we don't like, they all have a place on this planet. Like so many people hate spiders, but if we got rid of all the spiders, we would end up with worse bugs, even, you know, ones that do more damage. So every bug is beneficial. And I used to spray like my roses and things like that, but I have not done so for about the last maybe seven years. I completely have stopped because I noticed that there were no ladybirds at my place and then there's been a big push towards bees and things like that. So looking after the environment and the more that I've read into it and the more I think about it I mean we used you know I've just I just stopped spraying them and if they get eaten they get eaten I do go out on occasionally and I pick off bugs um, and squish them yes I know that's not very nice but <laughs> that's how it goes it's like flies I, I don't use fly spray very often I, I fling myself around my kitchen with a big fly swat it's very stress relieving far more stress relieving than spraying something with spray and you get a bit of exercise at the same time um, I know it can cause a little bit of a mess but that's easily cleaned up as well and, it, and there's no way that the flies become immune to being squashed so that's the other benefit of it uh, the long term fly population is not becoming immune to being squashed so yeah so that's what this um, video is about is about the um, painting of the bugs really and I do go later in later on and just touch up her face again but I also was trying to attempt a different mouth 
position by having her mouth open and having some teeth showing because quite often when you paint teeth it looks like they've got buck teeth <laughs> so it's not a good look I think it's very important to have the shadowing and don't have them blaringly white like you see on TV people who have used whitener on their teeth and it's they're like headlights you're blinded by their teeth it's it's pretty silly really but that is my own my opinion so that's all that is it's just my opinion so I have this is a 8 by 8 inch or 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter or 200 millimeter by 200 millimeter if you're a engineer or woodworker they like to use millimeters and I started this canvas with a whole different point of view. I plastered it with, um, what do you call that stuff, um, embossing paste. So, is it embossing paste? Um, something like that, that gives it a really, really strong texture. I can't find it at the moment what I did use. But yeah, it's like an embossing paste or a plaster type sort of paste that yeah holds holds the texture. So it's just random like texture all over it. So that made it a little bit different, difficult to paint some of these bugs and the face because there's texture, a texture to try and deal with as well as just the paint. I hope you don't mind, I'm actually having a drink of coffee at the same time as I am recording this. It's my morning tea. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to say too was that, yes, I do use... Um, images off of the internet as a guide to my paintings. Um, the fact that I've not sold anything and I'm not, I don't, I don't have the confidence to get to that point. Um, and in, being in New Zealand, I don't think, it would only be people overseas or something like that who, who possibly a small population portion of the population that would be interested in purchasing anything so anyway I sort of don't have a fear of the, the copyright uh, some of my images are my own ones so I would try and use my own where I can and if I know the photographer I have asked their permission to use their image um, but a lot are just ones off of the internet um, that I have borrowed. <laughs> so, yeah, I just wanted to, to point that out as well so that people are aware. I wasn't too happy um, with the fuzzy sort of part that goes all around the uh, circumference of her face and I also wasn't too happy about the the um, petals because I didn't really use a reference for all of these like the face and the sunflower didn't really have a reference for those um, so it's sort of sometimes you just you know not too happy with how how things are and then it's a battle you have with your head thinking oh well it doesn't matter if it's not perfect you know it's 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 your impression of what you see and all that sort of thing. So, um, yeah. So I'm now um, getting on, moving on to doing the bumblebee. And uh, that posed a bit of a, 
I had a bit of a challenge doing the wings. I must admit that this little easel that I got for Christmas has been so good. At first I thought, oh, it's going to be annoying because it's, it's like a little bench top one. But um, oh, it, I just have found it really good, the angle, and it makes it really good for taking the videos. The angle of it is, yeah, as I said, is quite good. And um, it has a little drawer that comes out the front. It was no use me. There's some that are out there that have a drawer that goes out the side. And I thought, well, that's no good because I've got so much stuff, you know, very important stuff on the side of my my little um, nook where I do my painting. But this nook is not just for painting. This nook is for card making and all sorts of stuff that I do. So, yeah, it gets pretty... Uh, I mean, I'm always falling over stuff because it's my sewing room as well and I do spend quite a bit of time still sewing especially in the summer when it's really hot. I don't want to be outside in the heat in the garden in the middle of the day, so I might come in and do a little bit of sewing. And, uh, yeah, so it certainly is my, it's my space, and I don't particularly care what it looks like. I do have a bit of a tidy up, but it probably never ever looks really any tidier than what it is before I do the tidy up, but that's how... That's how I operate. So, yeah. So, yes, the wings, because the wings are slightly see through, it's that's one of, one of the good things I think about acrylic is that you can just paint over the top of it. Whereas, well, and having, I suppose, watercolour is the same, I must admit, I'm not. I do a little bit of water, well, when I say I do a little bit, I do actually quite a lot of watercolour, especially in a sketchbook that I have. It's more just to add some colour to the drawings that I'm doing. But um, I suppose that everything teaches you, you know, no matter what medium you're using, you, you're learning something from each of them. So I quite like the acrylic how you can paint over the top of it and still have what is underneath showing through if you if you want it to um, so that was the challenge with the wings was to still leave the color seen underneath as well but he was quite yeah quite, I love bumblebees I think they're so neat um, I love, well, I love a lot of the bugs. I love nature. You know, I suppose that's why this sort of resonates with me, is the, to be mindful of everything. Everything is a balance, and we seem to be messing that up quite a lot. So I find it quite disheartening. So I try and do my bit, because I do firmly believe that if everybody did something that yeah, every little bit certainly helps um, also the other thing with this painting is I didn't paint down the sides even though sides have texture all over them as well I chose not to continue the leaves or the petals I should say over the edges which I normally do when I do my Paintings. I normally incorporate the border or edges into the painting to continue. Yeah, but this time I didn't. And uh, at the end is when I just go over it completely, go over the edges with a mixture of matter, a matter, re what is it called? Permanent brown matter and black and that was sort of the matter the brown matter was a lot of that reddy tone that you see in the petals so it brought that 
color into it as well you can you can see it in the in the light you can see that the br the black is not completely black which i have read is what you know you shouldn't just use the straight colors you should always mix something into them to well that's my theory <laughs> I'm sticking to it. It sounds good and I think it makes things look a bit better if the colours are never pure. So my palette is always a mix. The uh, Wettable palette has been a godsend as well. I think it's one of the greatest inventions because I was wasting paint and it was annoying. I'd go to paint something and the paint would all be dry. And because I don't paint every day... I mean, it's probably once a week, twice a week or something that I dedicate to these sort of paintings. The paint would be dry and then you'd be trying to replicate the paint that was there already on your picture. And so it all ended up being a little bit of a nightmare. So actually having the Stay Wet Handy Palette has freed up that. It's made me feel a lot better because like the, f yeah, it's just... I'm not wasting the paint, I'm, the palette is already still wet a week later and so the paint's still usable and, and you can just pick it up and continue and, and that's what I like about it. It gives you that a lot more freedom and I, you know, I think it's actually helped the confidence as well because the paint's there. So yeah, this is the bit where I actually went over her face again and I'm just blending in those tones around her eyes, the shadows, putting those back in. And yeah, I, I use my finger quite a lot. My fingers always end up covered in paint because that's what I sort of just push it, push it in, smear it, whatever. You just use whatever you've got in your position to, to make what you're doing work. Um... Yeah, I, I I was really, really happy with how her little face turned out. I think it's a happy little painting. And I'm as I said, I am really sorry that you never got to see um, the original starting or the battle that I had with the face to begin with. But I'm pleased that I didn't chuck it out or paint over it completely because I was so tempted to. Or that's why I chucked it in the box bag of all my other ones to end up painting over completely but I didn't so I'm really pleased about that and now I'm just going in um, fixing up the fuzzy seed head things that is around her head and also correcting and deepening at, uh, up the petals which I think helped to bring it all together so uh, just getting some shadows and also it's just getting the colors that are in other parts and putting them in with it as well like a bit of the red matter I was dabbing into the seed things as well um, just to bring all those colors that are already in the image into everything if you know what I'm trying to say sort of sounds I'm not the best I'm not the most um, articulate with my words so I apologize for that as well um, yeah I think yeah, it, it's not it's not easy trying to you know, some people are really good at getting out what they want to say. But anyway, I think here I am doing a few eyelashes. Uh, I don't normally put eyelashes on my girls' faces. I'm not sure why. There is no reason why. I think I do have a little bit of difficulty with it sometimes because you always get one side looking really good and then trying to get the other side to look as good can be a bit of an issue. So we're getting near the end of this little painting 
and uh, yeah I think the final thing that I usually do with them as well is I varnish put varnish over them to seal them in and I think it also helps to protect from you the UV light because it can be pretty pretty hard on things yes yeah, so here I am deepening up the red using the red matter and just putting in some um, uh, what would you call it I don't think it's like oh yeah the lines to just sort of define the petals a bit more that's a better word So going all the way around, I don't do really anything else with her face, don't do a few more shadows I think were put on around the bugs to pull them in to the, or ground them to the petals. So yeah, first off I thought that the petals were all too simplistic, so I think I've got them, well, they're probably still pretty simplistic, but I think they're looking a little bit better than what they were to begin with. And the light was sort of coming from the top, so that is why I have got it quite darker towards the bottom. And yeah, so this is where I put the shadow in for the bee. And I did already have some shadows on the ladybirds, but probably just darkened them up a little bit. And I am writing, be mindful, and I spelt a be mindful wrong, put another L in because I'm the world's worst speller as well and it wasn't until later on that I found out it was wrong so I did remove it. I'm such an ink and poop and I've signed it my name and um, I also went right round the edges with the black just at this last part of it. So I will Apologize again for not showing the face and I promise that the next one I post will be of the whole face painting and thank you all for watching but I hope you enjoyed what I did show of this painting anyway um, and thank you for taking the time to stop by I appreciate it and if you did like my painting please give it a thumbs up, I really appreciate. And any kind words you have, it's, it's certainly encouraging. Thank you so much everyone again. I, it um, makes me happy being able to share my work. So, and it makes me happy just being able to do art. So I hope you all get the, the art bug and paint as well. Because it's... Um, Good for your soul, as they say. Okay, thanks. Bye.